Hello everybody, this is Yoko Cinema Reactions, and if you see the screen, you know exactly what I'm talking, what I'm going to be ready to do. Let's see. Okay. This is going to be me reading A Sentence of a Bookworm, Volume 1, Part 3. And apparently the scene ending for mine going worse, you know, where she gets that fever right in the meeting with Benno and Lutz, that's apparently at the end of Book 2. So... Yeah, we're a bit away from that. <laughs> Let's continue where we last left off. This is where we last left off at the end of this page. Exploring the city. Yesterday, I cried and cried and cried. My parents got mad at me for dropping their comforter, dropping the comforter on the ground, and dinner time came. But I just kept crying without reacting that much. When morning came, I had cried so much that my eyes were dry and puffy. My head pounded with pain. Yeah, you cry too much, your head's gonna hurt. It's annoying. But my fever had gone down, and I didn't feel nearly as sluggish. Plus, I felt a lot better in general since I had cried my heart out, though my family basically had no idea how to treat me at breakfast. Hmm, looks like your fever has gone down. Mom touched my forehead with a hand that was cold from having just washed dishes. She also lightly pressed it against my swollen eyes. The cold felt so good. If you're feeling better, mine, would you like to go to the market with me? One's being held today. Wait. Did she say something about this being the busiest time of the year on her at her dying job? And that she had to go to work even while I was sick with the fever? Mom, seeing my confusion, lowered her eyes sadly. It's been so long since Tuli's had the chance to go outside instead of taking care of you, as she was so worried yesterday when you wouldn't stop crying. The only thing we could think of was that you got lonely on your own, so I made the effort to convince my co-workers to cover for me today. Upon hearing that, I gasped. I can't believe I actually cried all day with people watching. I want to dig a hole and jump beside it. Not much was worse than calming down and realizing how hard you embarrassed yourself the day before. Oh yeah. Um, I'm sorry. You don't need to apologize, mine. We all feel weak-hearted when we're sick. Mom rubbed my head gently, consoling me, but the kinder she was, the more guilty I felt. I'm really, really sorry. I cried exclusively out of despair over the lack of books. I didn't feel lonely without you at all. Tuli was that worried about me, but I just cared about her leaving so I could look for books. I'm so sorry. Tuli's going to the forest with everyone else, but you're still too weak for that. Want to go shopping with Mommy? Uh-huh. Oh my, I wonder where that enthusiasm came from. I didn't say it really with <laughs> near enough enthusiasm, but yeah. Mom smiled happily, thinking that I was excited to be spending time with her, and I responded with a bright smile of my own. <laughs> I knew you would be excited for this. Mom looked so happy that I didn't go out of my way to correct her. My enthusiasm had just shot through the roof since I was excited about potentially finding a book outside. I would go shopping with her and have her buy me a book. I didn't need a thick book in particular. Anything that I could use to learn this world's writing system would be enough. Honestly, I'd be fine with a workbook aimed at children. If a book was too much, I'd settle for a chart of this world's alphabet or whatever. I'm sure if I say I won't be lonely if I have a book, I'll stay home all day, alone all day, every day, in a really cute voice, she'd buy a picture book or two for her sick little daughter. <laughs> I can't wait. Okay, Mom, I'll be back later. Tuli peered into the bedroom with a full smile. Since Mom was staying home, she didn't have to babysit me all day. Stay with the other kids, okay? Be careful. Okay. Tuli strapped a large basket onto her back and skipped out of the house. It seemed like she was going out to play and have fun, but she was actually helping out the family in a crucial way. Collecting firewood. She would also grab nuts, mushrooms, and other stuff while she was at it. Whether or not we had a good, cheap meal each day depended largely on Tuli. Um, do your best, Tuli. My lunch is counting on you. This poverty-stricken world didn't have any school, so children largely helped out at the house or had jobs. Or at the least, schools never came up in mine's memories. Once kids got a little older than Tuli, they began working as apprentices. If given the chance, I would prefer to work as an apprentice librarian or a pen apprentice book salesman. Going to the market would provide the perfect opportunity to gather information on this kind of thing. If I find the nearest bookstore, befriend the owner, and become an apprentice there. Yeah, if it was only that easy. Then we might not have as much of a show if we did. Okay, mine, let's go shopping. It was the first time I was leaving home since becoming mine, and my first time wearing anything other than pajamas. My outfit was made up of worn-out hand-me-downs from Thule, and I had to put on several layers of the thick clothing I was so bundled up it was kind of hard to walk. But nonetheless, I took Mom's hand and took my first step outside our home. So cold, so narrow, so stinky. 
Perhaps due to this being a stone building, it felt like cold air was flowing through the walls themselves and not even my several layers of clothing could stop me from feeling a chill. I really would have liked to have a fleece jacket or some hand warmers, not to mention it made a, a mask to block the smell and help save off a cold. Mind, be careful not to fall. Right outside our home was a, stone a staircase leading down the building. My body was the size of a three-year-old toddler's, and each step was so large they filled me with terror. As Mom pulled me forward, I practically jumped down each one step one by one, listening to them creak as we spiraled down to the bottom of the stair down to the bottom of the building. For some reason, only the steps from the second floor downward were made out of a pretty stone. We all live in the same building. Why did they get special treatment? I pursed my lips, pouting as we finally reached the bottom and went outside. If my counting was accurate, we were on the apartment on the fifth floor out of seven. To be honest, for someone as weak, small, and sickly as me, just getting out of the house was enough to be exhausting. Now I knew why almost all of my memories took place inside. Even now, I was out of breath by the time I got outside. Well, then again, you were practically dragged out down the stairs, so you kind of didn't really do much, so even then... Even now, I was out of breath, but uh, it seemed like I would just pass out before I even reached our destination. <sighs> Mom, it's hard to breathe. Wait a second. But all we've done is leave the house. Are you okay? I just need a little break. Man, I, would, I felt so bad for mine. <laughs> Not being able to even manage going outside without losing breath. As I studied my breath and reminded myself I needed to shape up if I wanted to reach a bookstore, I looked around to get a grasp of my surroundings. A short distance away from our housing complex was a small place with a well in the middle. Only the ground around the well was paved with stone, and I could see several older women talking while washing their clothes. That was definitely the well Tuli used to wash dishes and get our daily water. I'll carry you on my back, mine. Mom, who must have thought our shopping would never get done if she waited for me, somewhat forcefully plopped me onto her back and started walking away. I couldn't remember this myself, but judging by how she had something like a baby carrier on her back, she was probably used to carrying mine around. I feel bad for the mom. The plaza with the well was surrounded by tall apartment-like building complexes on all four sides with just one path leading to the outside. After passing through the narrow, dark alleyway, we merged onto a large road. Wow, this looks exactly like one of the old European cities I've seen photos of. An unfamiliar scene spread out before me with carts pulled by horses and donkey-like creatures passing each other by on a wide cobblestone road dotted on either side by stores. I spun around, looking everywhere like a tourist in my quest to find a bookstore. Mom, which stores are we going to? What are you saying, mine? We're going to the market. We almost never go to stores. Well, apparently I'm guessing the stores are what the rich people have. The poor people have the markets. Okay. According to Mom, most of the stores were ground level, near ground level, sold products for relatively... Yeah, I just answered my own question right there. <laughs> sold products for relatively rich individuals and had little that poor commoners like us could keep. Or could buy, sorry. We bought the majority of our daily goods at an actual marketplace. Mm, in other words, a bookstore is probably a ground floor store just like these. I looked around for a bookstore Mom walked and soon saw an especially large building that would serve as a solid landmark. It was made of white stone and despite its simple design, there was sort of a sort of majesty to it that made it stand out. Um, is that a castle? No, that's a temple. You'll be going there to be baptized when you turn seven. Ah, a temple. It sounds like religion is enforced here, which sucks. I try to avoid that place as much as possible. My instinct and knowledge from my past life made me want to keep my distance from religion. But I didn't know if this word would be too kind to an atheist. Oh, are you an atheist girl? So I kept my mouth shut and looked at the walls surrounding the temple. Mom, what are those walls? Those are castle ramparts. Inside is the castle where our lord lives, and the mansions where nobles live. Well, in the end, nothing behind them. those walls has much to do with you and me. The tall stone walls looked more like the gate to a prison than grounds where royalty lived without a care. Or without a castle, sorry. Maybe it would look even more like a prison if the guards were ever on high alert and defending against something. The blank white walls continued on either side and although it looked like they had been designed with imposing dignity in mind, without any artistic flourishes, they didn't quite feel like they didn't quite feel like the British walls of a prison a fortress. It felt like they had been built only for the purpose of separation and it would be defenseless if ever actually attacked. Hmm. 
They do look a little different from the European castles I've seen in historical films and stuff. Okay, Mom, what about those other walls? Those are the outer walls. They protect the city. You know Gunter works as a guard at the southern gate, don't you? I knew from mine's memories that Dad worked as a soldier, but I didn't know that he guarded over one of the gate of one of the gates of the city. Hmm. There's a castle where the Lord of these lands lives, and then both and there's both outer and inner walls here. I guess it's safe to consider like a capital this a capital city? It doesn't seem like that big of a city, judging by the length of the walls and how many people are walking around. But I shouldn't think on the scale of Tokyo or Yoki, Yokohama anymore. It would be a huge city in comparison to the historical fortress cities I've read about in my past life. But in this world, where it's normal to have green and blue hair, there were no guarantees that any Irano knowledge would remain accurate. Or that my Irano knowledge would remain accurate. It would be risky to settle on the idea of this being a large or small city before I learned more about this world. Ah, the size of the city will change what kind of bookstore it'll have. But I don't understand what makes a big city here. Is the city big? Is it small? Tell me, someone! Mine, we need to hurry to the market. Everything good will get snapped up before we get there. I looked around desperately in search of a bookstore on our way to the market, but most of the stores on either side of us just had simple drawings on their signboards. The signs were either wooden with the art painted on or metal with the art engraved into them. But either way, I didn't see anything resembling letters. That was good for someone like me, who couldn't read the letters anyway, but a cold chill was starting to run up my spine. Wait, um, I don't think I've seen a single letter in this whole city. Is the literacy rate that low? Or does writing itself not exist in this world? The very idea made my blood run cold. I hadn't even considered the possibility of a world without letters. Without letters, books wouldn't exist in the first place. I reached the market while I was still stunned. I lifted my head up. I lifted my head. Ugh. I lifted up my head at the cacophony of noises and saw a lively bunch of stands lined up next to each other with plenty of people passing through. It looked so much like Japanese cultural festival that I felt a little nostalgic. I subconsciously smiled and after peering into a nearby fruit stall, saw something that shocked me to the point of smacking my mom's shoulder. Mom, look, what's that board? A board with some symbols written on it was stuck into a box of fruit in it. I couldn't read them, but at the very least, that confirmed that this world had letters or numbers or something. I was so starved for letters that the mere sight of such symbols was enough to make my face flush with excitement. Oh, that's the price. It tells us how much we need to pay. Hey, Mom, what's it say? Mom looked so surprised at how excited I was getting, but I didn't care about that. I had her read me the numbers on each board I saw, and I could feel them start to connect with the letters I already knew. Okay, great. Keep it up, my precious synopsis. Synapses. <laughs> okay, so that's this says 30 Leons. Lions, whatever. Leons. I'm just going to say Leons because it kind of sounds more like a currency. After Mom had read out several numbers to me, I tried reading some numbers on my own while gauging her reaction. I must have been right, given how she turned her head around to look at me while blinking rapidly. I'm really surprised you learned them that fast, mine. <laughs> there were ten distinct symbols for what, what seemed to be numbers, so I assumed operating with base ten math would be fine. I'm really glad they don't use base two or base sixty. I should be able to do math no problem if I can just memorize all the symbols. Oh, wait. Am I going down the child prodigy path here? At age 10, I'll be God's gift to mankind, and at age 15, I'll be a genius. But once I hit 20, I'll just be a normal person. Oh, well. Books unobtainable. Okay, we're getting meat next. We need to buy lots of it and then salt or smoke it to make it last. After buying some fruit, vegetables and fruits, Mom headed deeper into the market. The stands selling meat were apparently closer to the outer walls. Why are we buying lots of it? We need to prepare for winter, don't we? It's late autumn, so all the farms are butchering meat, most of their animals, and leaving just enough to survive the winter. More meat is sold now than at any other time of the year. Plus, animals tend to pack on weight in preparation for hibernating. Tasty, fatty meat is a lot easier to get right now. Um, does that mean the market goes away during the winter? Isn't that obvious? There are har there's hardly any crops you can farm in the winter. The snow's terrible, too, so barely any markets are held during the winter. It was obvious now that I hadn't thought about that at all. Even in Japan, back in the time before home greenhouses became popular, 
Fruits and vegetables were seasonal and would disappear from store shelves until they were back on the market later. In an age before freezers and refrigeration made it possible to store food in a fresh state, people had to make non-perishable food in their own homes. So basically in this world, it's natural to buy and cure food. To be honest, I didn't really see myself being that helpful with any of that. I'm really glad I was reincarnated as a little girl that won't get yelled at for not being a help around the house. It stinks. The foul air got worse the closer we got to the meat stands. Well, it makes sense. You're going to be around fresh, dead meat, so it's going to stink. <coughs> Hang on. Sorry, I saw a notification on my phone. I thought maybe it was a text, but it wasn't. I had to hold my nose to bait it. To bear it, but Mom kept walking forward without batting an eye. I could hardly believe it. The smell was so bad, not even holding my nose closed was enough to... It snuck through my mouth and hit me so hard, tears formed in my eyes. And yet she didn't seem bothered by it. She's used to it! She's used to it her whole life! From when she's a kid to now! Of course she's used to it. You are not! Has meat always smelled this bad? Ugh, I got a bad feeling about this. We reached the meat stand. Strips of bacon and ham were hanging it from the top, plus completely recognizable animal corpses that had obviously just had their skins peeled off. Ew. Within the stands were dead animals hanging off hooks, being drained of blood, and beneath them were wide-eyed rabbits and birds. Oh no, they're still alive! <laughs> I may have seen pictures of skinned animals before, but all the meat I ever saw in real life had always been pre-sliced and put in packs. The meat stands of this world were far too shocking to me. Goosebumps came across my skin and tears dripped out of my eyes. I wanted to shut my eyes to block it out, out, but my eyes remained locked open as if I had forgotten how to close them. Mine? Mine? Mom shook me a little and spanked my rear end, but a second later I saw a pig squealing in fear as a butcher prepared to chop it up. Oh god, don't let her watch that. Even if you're used to that stuff in that world, still that should be shocking for a child to see. Unless your parents are butchers, in which case, um... You should be used to that. A crowd of grinning people surrounded it, eagerly awaiting the moment of its death. Uh, then again, they don't have entertainment really in this world, so I guess that'd be the closest thing they get to entertainment. Ah, I let out a small cry and right before the pig's last moments passed out on my mother's back. Something flowed into my mouth. It was a liquid that smelled so strongly of alcohol I wanted to gag. I didn't want to drink it and the unexpected liquid went into my windpipe. Coughing hard, I shot up while blinking rapidly. <coughs> um, was that alcohol? Who in the world would give an innocent little girl strong alcohol like that? What do you do if I get acute alcohol poisoning? Opened my eyes wide and saw my mom holding what looked like a wine bottle. Mind, you're awake. Thank goodness. The stimulant really did work. <coughs> mom? She was holding me with a really relieved look on her face, so I couldn't just say it out loud. Well, allow me to rant a little on the inside. Stimulant or not, why the heck would you ever give a child alcohol that strong? And I mean a weak little girl that's always sick and just recovered from a bad fever that nearly killed her too. Okay, Maya, now that you're awake, let's go buy some meat. Oh, no, 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 not that again. <laughs> I shook my head on instinct. What I had just seen was already burned into my retinas. It was so horrible I'd probably have nightmares about it, and just thinking about it gave me goosebumps. I never wanted to go there again. Um, I still feel kind of sick. Can I stay here? You can go on ahead, Mom. What? But... Mom furrowed her brows. I looked around and decided to ask the older lady managing the stand behind us for help. I needed somewhere to stay before Mom dragged me away. Um, ma'am, can I please stay here for a little bit? I'll be still and I won't get in your way. You sure are a polite little girl, aren't you? Your mother brought some alcohol for me, so I don't mind. Miss, go ahead and finish your shopping. You don't want to pull your sick child around and make her pass out again, do you? Yeah, you don't want that. The alcohol-selling lady who had seemingly sold mom that stimulant cackled to herself and easily accepted my request. The middle-aged man running what looked like a pawn stand nearby looked at me sympathetically and gestured me over. You can come stay behind my stand. Nobody will kidnap you back here, except possibly you. I went behind a stand and sat on the ground without hesitation. The strong alcohol from before was stirring around in my body. It'd be dangerous for me to walk around in that state. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, you think it was at this point? Okay. I'll be right back, mine. Don't go anywhere, okay? As mom hurried off to finish her shopping, I stayed sitting down and lazily stared at the at the wares of the two stands. 
This was apparently the season where she got new shipments of fruit wine, so customer after customer walked up to buy small bottles, barrels of it from her. On the other hand, not many people stopped by the pawn stand. Hmm, I wonder what people even pawn in this world. I took a look at the wares surrounding me, and I didn't recognize what more than half of them were used for. I pointed at the stuff lined in front of me and asked the older man what one of them was. Mister, what's this? You haven't seen what used one before? It's something you use when weaving cloth, and this is a trap used for hunting. The older man seemed a little bored from the lack of customers, so he gave me explanations for everything I pointed at. Almost everything considered normal for daily life in the city was something I didn't recognize. Even at, when searching through mine's memories, I found that she didn't had not been familiar with any of them either, maybe due to a lack of interest. I looked at his line of products, letting out awed murmurs at their various purposes, and eventually reached the corner of a stand where I found a thick and heavy stack of papers bound tightly, just like a book. The binding was masterfully done with gold carvings pressed into each corner of the cover. It was about 40 centimeters tall and looked exactly like something I would have seen in a glass case back in the libraries I used to go to. A book? Um, wait, isn't that a book? The moment I realized the bound papers were actually a book, the world around me lit up like lit up in pink. My heart brightened and I felt as if the dark clouds that had surrounded me for days had finally been swept away. Mister, what's this? What is it? Oh, that's a book. Yes, I finally found one. Here's a book. It's just one, but it's here. In the midst of my despairing over whether or not books even existed in this world, I had finally found one. I looked at the bound paper while trembling with emotion. It was fairly large and heavy looking book. It was a fairly large and heavy looking book with rich decorations. I wouldn't be able to carry it with my weak, sickly arms. Plus, it definitely looked expensive, and I know for sure my mom wouldn't buy it no matter how hard I begged. But if books existed at all, that meant for sure there would be smaller, easier to carry books out there. Wishful thinking! I spun around and began interrogating the older man with clear desperation. Mister, do you know where they sell books? What, like in a store? There aren't any stores for books. The older man looked at me, baffled at the mere idea. My excitement immediately plummeted. Um, why are there books but not stores that sell them? You have to copy each book by hand to get a new one. They're so expensive, there's no market for them. Even that book is just something a noble pawned to pay back a debt. It's not for sale. It's looking like he won't be paying you back in time, and although I'll start selling it soon, only nobles will be interested, I'll bet. Urgh, friggin' nobles. This means I could have read books too if I was reborn as a noble, right? Why did you nick me a commoner, God? I felt a slightly murderous rage towards nobles. They were unfairly blessed to live surrounded by books from birth. Yeah, gosh darn those noblemen. <laughs> Is this your first time seeing a book, little girl? Most likely. Well, for mine anyway, not for Lorano. I nodded over and over without looking away from the book. It was the first time I was seeing a book in this world anyway. And since only nobles dealt with books, perhaps the lack of, plus the lack of book sources might end up being the last time too. Which means, Mister, I have a request. I clenched my fist tightly, and after standing up straight, immediately knelt onto the ground. Huh? What's this all of a sudden? The older man opened his eyes wide, surprised, as I groveled on my hands and knees before him. It was just basic stuff that you needed to show your sincerity when making a request, and the ultimate form of sincerity was pivotal, gro was pitiful, gro pitiful groveling. With my head held low, I told him my true feelings. I know that I can't afford this book, but please, at least let me touch it. I want to rub my cheeks against it. I want to sniff the book and inhale the scent of its ink before it's taken away from me. Despite my passionate request, the only thing that followed was a painful silence. He wasn't replying to me. I timidly rose my head bit by bit and saw that for some reason the older man had a shocked and disgusted look on his face. As if he was looking at an unbelievable pervert up close. Um, it kind of feels like my sincerity didn't get across to him. I, I don't know what's gotten into you, but I got the feeling I shouldn't let you touch that book. No way! I tried to ask you again, but before I could, my time limit ran out. Mine, I'm back. Let's go. I nearly cried after hearing Mom's voice. There was a book so close, but I hadn't read it. I hadn't touched it. I haven't even smelled its scent. What's wrong, Mine? Did he do something to you? No, 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 he didn't. I hardly shook my head after Mom suddenly glared at the older man. If I didn't clear the misunderstanding up fast, I would be bringing trouble to the nice man who had sheltered me from the butcher and taught me about books. My head feels weird, Mom. What did you make me drink? I felt weird since waking up. Uh, the stimulant may have been a bit much for you. You'll be fine if you drink some water and rest when we get home. Mom nodded to herself, but didn't seem to regret making her child drink alcohol. She took my hand and pulled to get me walking home. 
I twirled around to the two stand owners and smiled brightly. Thank you for letting me stay here. It'd be bad for my mental health if I didn't thank them. According to mine's memories, it wasn't customary to bow in this world, so I just settled for smiling and waving. Smiles were important in making human interactions successful. I saw me off with smiles on their faces too, as it must have worked. So it must have worked. Mine, do you still feel bad? Mm-hmm. We talked little on the way home, me on Mom's back again. I looked again along the way, but there really weren't any bookstores. I had thought that I would beg for a children's picture book and slowly learn letters, but the day ended without me getting anything. All I had learned was that there weren't any bookstores. I now lived in a city with a castle and magnificent stone gates, but it didn't have a single bookstore. Since that man said that books weren't ready, really for selling, it was possible that this city wasn't special. Maybe there were no bookstores in the whole world. This is awful. I love books so much I could go days without eating so long as I could read, and now you're telling me to live life without books, God? That's just cruel. Even if I told my parents I wanted to become a noble in order to read books, they'd just treat me like a cute kid with a big silly dream. I couldn't tell them I didn't want to be born in this family, but at the very least I would have liked to be born in a family with enough wealth to fish through a fallen noble's belongings and maybe get a book that way. My family circumstances are so awful that I've already been beaten down by them. I know I won't get a book no matter how hard I cry or how many tantrums I throw. With no bookstores, I have no way of getting books. And what do I do if I can't get them? Well, what choice do I have but make them myself? When the going gets tough, the tough get going. I'll get books no matter what. I won't. No matter what, I won't let life beat me. And I think I might be ending it off there. Let's see. Hang on, come on. Let's see how far I've gotten on recording. Okay, I'm going to have to cut out a little bit because my mom came in the room. But I think I'm going to end this part off here and I'll see you guys next time.